Cinderella from A Wee Book of Fairy Tales in Scots by Matthew Fitt and James Robertson, illustrated by Deborah Campbell and published by Ichiku. Lang, lang ago, in the days of Lang Syne, there was a young lass cried Cinderella. Cinderella was affy bonny. She was that bonny, the birdies on the trees chanted her name and the flowers in the garden turned their heads and smiled. And Cinderella was an awfully kind lassie. If a bairnie got lost in the way home for school, she would bide with him until the bairnie's mother came and found them. If a dog got a scalf in its paw, she would tack it out with her saft, gentle horns. And if she saw an old man chittering with the cold in a winter's day, she would give him a lanier jacket. Cinderella was kind to Obdy. But Cinderella had twa sisters that were nae kind to it on Obdy. Ain of they sisters was cried Bumbledina, and the other sister was cried Hinkelly Doo. Bumbledina and Hinkelly Doo were nae very nice to Cinderella. The sisters made her day all the work in the house. Every day, starting at six in the morning, Cinderella had to clean out the bathroom and how up weeds in the garden and polish the kitchen flare until she could see her face in it. When she was finished, the twa sisters made her sleep under the kitchen table. They gave her stra- scraps of bread to eat and dirty old clothes to wear. But worst of all, they followed her in the house all day telling her she was ugly and that she was hackett. Cinderella, Cinderella, she's got legs like an umbrella. She's so ugly, she's so hackett. Took you and look in the mirror crack it. Face like a coo, lugs like a rabbit. Eyeways greeting, eyeways crab it. Bumbledina and Hinkelly do thought themselves the most beautiful lassies in the tune and they would sing to each other while they put slaverings and slasterings of makeup onto their faces with a trowel. We're the bonniest quines that's ever been, the bonniest quines in the world's ever seen. But the affy truth was that Bumbledina had a face like a cuddy, and the even mere affy truth was that Hinkelly Do had a face like that same cuddy's back end. Even when the sisters' hackett faces were hidden under hunters of makeup, and even when they put on their finest, most expensive clays, Bumbledina and Hinkelly Do were still as plain and as ordinary as twa tumshies in a field. But Cinderella, who didn't they wear, wear any makeup at all and only had raggedy old clothes to dress up in, was aye as bonny as the first rose of summer. And day, an invitation came for the royal palace. Bumbledina read it out. Bonny ladies, lassies all, please attend the prince's ball. In the blink of an ee, the twa hackett sisters were busy trying on clothes and putting flowers in their hair and battering makeup onto their faces. The king's son is haying a dance, oh sister dear, this is our chance. I can, sister hen, and I'll bet in my life that young handsome prince, wee prince, is after a wife. Cinderella sighed. She would love to go to the dance, but she had no fine clothes to wear. She didn't even have any shoes. Politely, she spared the sisters if they would tack her wear. That prince needs a kind, sensitive woman, said Hinkelly Do, picking some tatties at her lug. So just you forget it, you're no coming. And the twa hackett sisters I clattied up with lipstick and coming down with jewels and pure bouffing with perfume went stoitering off in their high heels to the palace water. Cinderella sat down aside the lum and started to greet. What stole your scone, my wee darling? said a voice. Cinderella looked up, but there was nobody there. What's taking your bonny smile, my wee dumpling? said the voice again. When Cinderella looked up this time, she saw an old lady in a white goon with lang grey hair that shimmered with glisters and sparkles. Tell me what's wrong, my cushy do, the lady asked. A canny gang to the dance, said Cinderella. I'll never see the prince now. Never say never and didn't say canny, 
I'm here to help you. I'm your fairy granny. There's nothing can stop us, nothing at all. Cinderella, my dear, you will gang to the ball. The poor lassie was confused. But how, fairy granny? No time to waste, no time to sleep. I'll wait out to the garden and bring me a neep. A neep, said Cinderella. But, fairy granny, what will you do? A muckle big tum she lass. Bring me in now. Cinderella gaed to the field and found the biggest neep there and brought it to her fairy granny. The old lady clouted it with her magic wand. Instantly, the neep turned into a beautiful golden carriage. Next, said her fairy granny, gang ben the hoose and bring me yon trap that you keep for the moose. Cinderella gave ben the hoose and brought her fairy granny the moose trap. When she opened it up, out ran six brown mice. Fairy Granny scalped each moose on the dowper with her magic wand and the six mice turned into six fine cuddies. Then, Cinderella had to catch the ratten that had lived under the pipes in the kitchen and her Fairy Granny turned that ratten into a big strang driver for the carriage. Then, Cinderella had to go out to the garden and dig up six forky tallies and her fairy granny turned the forky tallies into six smart footmen. Now, young lady, what can you wear? And what on earth will we do with your hair? Fairy granny waggled her wand or Cinderella's old clothes and all the raggedy clothes wove themselves together in a gorgeous silken gown. With another swirl of magic, Cinderella's hair was combed and brushed and curled like a princess on her wooden day. And we you and we yin last stab with a magic wand, Cinderella threw on her feet a pair of glass slippers. Oh fairy granny, exclaimed Cinderella, near greeting with joy. Away and enjoy yourself, the kind old lady said. Hey hunters of fun. But be hame afore twelve, or all will be undone. Be hame afore twelve, or it will all be undone. And so, Cinderella did gang to the ball, and the young prince would dance with nobody else the whole evening. Run and run the dance flare they went. The young couple didn't speak. They just stared into each other's zine as the music carried them room the palace hall. And all the royal guests could do was gossip and gab about the mysterious young lass. Where is she? Where is she fae? But nobody can and nobody could say. Even mere than unusual, Bumbledina's and Hinkelly Doo's faces were tripping them. That wee besom, said S- Sister Dear, is dancing with our future groom. Come on, we'll gear a good hard kit next time they come around. And Bumbledina and Hinkelly do both tried to jundy the young woman out of the road and dance with the prince themselves, but the royal guards carted the Hackett sisters off and put them in for a nicht in the dungeon. Cinderella was enjoying herself that much that she forgot all about the time. She was still dancing with the prince when the clock chap twelve. We a gasp. Cinderella slipped out of the prince's arms and ran down the palace steps and looped into her carriage. The prince raced after her to spy her name, but the carriage had disappeared round the corner. When he looked down, he saw Anna Cinderella's glass slippers lying in the ground at his feet. Halfway home, the tall, smart footman turned back in his scaly forky tailies and the driver turned back into a big clatty rat, and the six strang cuddies became once again wee brown mice that scurried off into the dark, and the beautiful golden carriage changed back all a sudden into a neep. Poor Cinderella. She walked the rest of the way home in her raggedy old clothes, holding the neep under her oakster, and thinking she would never see the prince again. But the very next day, the prince chapped in Cinderella's door, I seek the foot that this came affy. Is this yours, this crystal baffy? 
Bumbledina and Hinkelly Doo came thundering down the stair like a pair of stampeding coos and pushed Cinderella aside. Bumbledina grabbed the glass slipper for the prince. He's here for me. This is it. This thing belongs in my wee foot. But Bumbledina couldn't get the glass slipper on her muckle foot. Out of the road, shouted Hing Kelly Doo. I'm next in line. I bet that toty baffy's mine. But Hing Kelly Doo couldn't get the glass slipper on either for all the warts and bunions bealing in her tays. Then the prince looked all at Cinderella. What about this lassie here? Nay chance, prince, the sister said. Nay way, nay fear. Yon's just our sister Cinderella. She's too hackett, poor and smelly. But when the prince put the slipper on to Cinderella's foot, it fitted her perfectly. The prince looked into Cinderella's een and he saw at the inst that she was the bonny lass he had danced with the next bit afore. They were married the very next day, and whenever the prince and Cinderella held a royal ball, they always invited the palace servants to the dance. And as for Bumbledina and Hing Kelly Do, they ended up as Cinderella's maids, and they had to polish the palace flares every morning until they could see their hackett crabbit faces in them. <laughs>